Hare Krishna, good morning. We're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 1, Chapter 11, Lord Krishna's entrance into Dvaraka, Text 26. Uh, we don't have every okay, I'll just read once the Sanskrit. Uh, this is describing the Lord's Yeah. This is describing the Lord. Shriyo Nivaso Yasyo Rapana Patram Lukam Dvisham Bahavo Lukka Padanam Saranganam Padam Bujam Translation and purport were part of the purport, long purport, by Sivan Grace and Sri Bhakti Vanta Swami Shri Rauva Ki Translation. The Lord's chest is the abode of the goddess of fortune. His moonlight face is the drinking vessel for eyes which anchor after all that is beautiful. His arms are the resting place for the administrative demigods, and his lotus feet are the refuge of pure devotees who never talk or sing of any subject except his lordship. <coughs> Лунопотобното му лице е като изящния съд за очите, които търсят красивото. Ръцете му са убежището на управляващите полубогове. А лотосовите му нозе са послон чистите предани, които никога не говорят за никой друг и не разсъпляват никой друг, освен него. Окей. Okay. Um, се опитаме да въобщим няколко момента от коментара, вместо да четем целият коментар. First, Prabhupada is talking about um, person seeking the favor of the goddess of fortune. Първо ще Прабхупада говори за различни личности, които търсят благосклонността на богинята на щастието. Well, the Bhagavatam wants to, you know, call attention for all different sorts of um, aspirants for favors, that all the favors are really coming from the Lord. Bhagavatam wants to call attention for all the favors that all the favors are really coming from the Lord. Bhagavatam wants to call attention for all the favors that all the favors are really coming from the Lord. Едно от имената на Бога е Шри Ниваса. Ниваса means residence and Шри means fortune. Ниваса означава убежище, а Шри означава лакшми. So here it says Шриаха Ниваса. It's the same thing but just separating the Самаса. И тук се казва също нещо Шриаха Ниваса. So if if uh, if somebody is the place of residence of Lakshmi of Sri, then wouldn't it make sense to uh, find out something about that residence? Ако за някой ярично се твърди, че той е обежището на Лакшми, не е ли добре да се опитаме да разберем нещо повече за това ярично? Yeah, Prabhupada continues on that subject, and then, um, as is one of Prabhupada's favorite subjects, to put 
down the impersonalist. <laughs> so he also does here. И Пропад продължава с коментара. И една от неговите любими теми е да заклеймява имперсоналисти, това, което той прави отново тук в този коментар. He has an interesting expression here. The problem for the impersonalists is they have a dry speculative habit. Този коментар ще пропада по интересен начин, казва че проблемът на имперсоналистите е, че ще имат сухи спекулативни навици. Навици за сухи спекулации. Сухи. Сухи. Ако техните спекулации не бяха сухи, би било окей, но те са много сухи. Uh, then he goes on to discuss the next point of the verse, which is Anapatram uh, Mukham Drisham. The Mukha, the face of the Lord, uh, is the vessel, the drinking vessel for the eyes. Is that what she Mukham? че лицето на Бога е като изящен съд за очите. Which is a way of saying that the Lord is very beautiful because the eyes are always looking for beauty. Което е начин да се каже, че Богът е много красив, защото очите винаги се стремят към красота. And this leads into the subject of art. Of course, there is a a common connection, the notion of art, art history with beauty, it's there. Mm. So, of course, uh, the Bhagavatam is making the point, is where, what is the reservoir of all art and all beauty? Uh, it's the body of the Lord. Bhagavatam естествено заявява, че източникът на цялата красота е тялото на Бога. The next line of the verse, Prophet elaborates on Bahavoloka Palanam. The arms are the place of the Loka Palas, the administrative demigods. Следващия част от част от стиха се казва, че ръцете на Бога са обежище на управляващите глубове и пропад. Да обяснява и това в коментара. He makes an interesting point that these administrative gods are actually always in fear. Пропад прави този интересен коментар, че всъщност тези управляващи глубове винаги се страхуват. What are they afraid of? They're afraid that their position is going to get taken over. <laughs> and of course, Indra is famous for this. He always has a bit of a, I don't know, a mental problem that <laughs> he's worried somebody's going to take over his position. Uh, but then he says, uh, Prabhupada explains, if these administrative demigods would just take shelter of the arms of the Lord, uh, they would be sure that they will always be protected. There's a nice verse in the 10th canto, Jayati Janani Vaso, Devaki Janana Vado, Yadu Vara Parishak Svayar Dorbir Asyana Dharma, Stira Chara Vajjina Dna Susmita Shimukina Raja Pura Vahint Anand Vartayan Kamrutam, Sva Dorbir Asyana Dharma. By his own arms the Lord protects against a Dharma or he smashes. 
courses that I've done. Десета песен има един интересен клип, който се казва, че чрез своите собствени ръце Бог етикетира всички или той също разбива всички видове и източници на Адарма. I remember in one temple in Germany this verse was written out and posted in the in the Brahmachari Ashram. Спомни си в един храм в Германия, този същия стих беше написан на стената на Брамачария Шрам. And this was referred to as the Jayati Mantra. И този стих беше станал известен като The Jayati Mantra или Jayati Mantra. So the Brahmins had their Gayatri Mantra, but everyone else could chant the Jayatri Mantra. И Брамните си повтаряли Anyway, this is interesting. Prabhat says, other so-called administrators are symbols of anachronisms leading to the acute distress of the people who are governed by them. Интересно, право път пише, останалите така наречени администратори са източник на много притеснения за хората. Symbols of anachronisms. На по-скоро анахронизъм. Символ на анахронизъм за хората. An anachronism is something which is out of date. Нещо, което е много старомодно. So in other words, this whole this is Prabhupada's common, you know, another favorite topic is unqualified leaders. Druga ljubima tema na Shri Prabhupada je tema se za nek dostojnite, nek kvalificirani lideri. Okay, and then Sharan. Sarangganam padambujam is the last line, and Prabhupada is referring to these. He's referring to the pure devotees, sarangas, who sing and talk about the Lord. Последната част на стиха Сарангганам падамуджам ще Прабхупада обяснява Сарангам с една си да чистите предани, които единствено говорят и разпяват само Бога. And they're compared to bees, which are going after the honey of the lotus. И те се равняваме с пчели, които винаги се стремят към меда на лотоса. And then he quotes Rupa Goswami with a verse comparing himself to a bee. И след това Пропад цитира стих от Рупа Госвами, който сравнява самия себе си с една пчела. О, мой Лорд Кришна, ай бег да оффер мои прияри на тебе. Мой мъд е как би, и е за сега хани. Кайдно, тогава дай мой би мъд е плец на твоя лотос фит, които са ресурсите за всички хани трансцентал. Я знам, че даже големи демигоди, как и Брама, не видят сега рейзи на твоя лотос фит, даже когато са вързани в медитация за всички хани трансцентал. For years together, still, O infallible one, my ambition is such. For you are very merciful to your surrendered devotees. O Madhava, wow, this is a long prayer. O Madhava, I know also that I have no genuine devotion for the service of your lotus feet, but because your lordship is inconceivably powerful, you can do what is impossible to be done. Your lotus feet can derive even the nectar of the heavenly kingdom. Therefore, I am very much attracted by them. Oh, Supreme Eternal, please, therefore, let me, my mind be fixed at your lotus feet, so that eternally I may be able to relish the taste of your transcendental service. И в тази молитва, Рупа Госвами казва, О, мой Господи Кришна, позволи ми да ти отдам молитвите си. Имат ми като пчела, която е жадна за мес. Бъди ми гостив и дай на тази пчела място при лотосовите си нозе, откъдето извира целият трансцентален мед. Знам, че дори велики полубове, като Брама, не могат да видят очите, ноктите и макар, че години наред остават потунали в себе цави. 
Но аз имам такова желание о безпогрешен. Затова ти си много милостив, защото ти си много милостив към душите, отдали се на теб. О, Мадава, знам също, че нямам истинска преданост, за да мога да служа в лотосовите ти нозе. Но понеже си изключително могъщ, ти можеш да осъществиш и невъзможното. Пред лотосовите ти нозе е жалък дори нектарът на небесното царство. Затова те така ме привлякоха. Обърховна вечност. Нека умът ми се установи върху лотосовите ти нозе, за да мога вечно да се наслеждавам на вкуса на трансцентално послужване към теб. Yeah, so Krishna's feet are often compared to lotuses. Have you ever seen a real lotus flower? Sometimes in my work. Yeah, yeah, mostly I think one sees lilies. Near the long gurgo. <laughs> but I have seen real lotuses in in Guyana, northern South America. Uh, they they grow right along along the highway uh, where the water gathers. There's lotus flowers. Те растат точно на магистралата от страни на лотосовите петя. И са много големи и като ги видиш, може да разбереш защо мнозето на Кришна се сравняваме с тях. Те са много трансцентални и очевидно, че не са от този свят. И от, а, от тях получавате такова чувство, усещане за красотата на Кришна. Ако това са само мнозето на Кришна, разбира се, цялото тяло на Кришна се обявява с лото си. Really Тогава получаваме такова разбиране. Усещане, защо всъщност преданите не са всъщност привлечени към нищо друго, освен към Кришна? Really Защото нищо всъщност не може да се сравни. И тогава и тогава също може да разберем защо тези предани се наричат саранга. Тази дума саранга е свързана с сара, което означава всъщност същина есенция. And so Krishna is the essence of beauty and that essence is really there's nothing else to compare. Кришна е същността, есенцията на красотата и тази красота на Кришна не може да бъде сравнена с нищо друго. But you know talk where had the expression Sara Grahi Vaishnava. Бактина Такор има израза Sara Grahi Vaishnava. So Sara means essence. Grahi means one who grasps. Sara означава същност, а Grahi означава този, който приема или взема. So a Vaishnava who grasps the essence. Това означава един вайшнава, който приема същността, есенцията. So what's the opposite of grasping the essence? Кое е противоположното на това да хванеш, да приемеш същността? What would be the opposite of that? Yeah, I'm thinking of experience. 
Yeah, you could say it like that, being being preoccupied by externals. Да бъдеш взет прекалено много с външните неща, това е, не можеш да се каже по този начин, кое е обратното на Вайшнава. Uh, to be a Vaishnava is not to get distracted by externals. But to go for what is essential. So, okay, but what's essential? <laughs> Dubre. <laughs> uh, yeah, what is essential? Кое е важното нещо? Да. Въпрос. Yeah. Is that a rhetorical question? No. <laughs> <laughs> so we can discuss. No, ma, това е риторичен въпрос. Не, не, може да дискутираме. My mind says that um, we don't understand the difference between the external and the internal or the essential. Може да се обърнем към тази разговор между Рамнан Дара и Бог Читания, когато Рамнан Дарая казва, предлага Варна Шрама, обаче Махапо го казва, това е нещо външно. И първи път, когато Махапо го избрява отговорът на Рамнан Дарая, е когато той цитира този стих от Шимат Бхагава там. <laughs> Similar. Something like that. Okay. Uh, one of the contexts in which Bhakti Milton talks about Sadagrahi Vaishnav is when considering different religious traditions of the world. Е, когато описва различните религиозни традиции в света. Uh, in Chaitanya Shikshamrita, he writes this interesting paragraph in which he says, suppose, something like, suppose you're invited to some, uh, some place of worship which is different from your own. В Chaitanya Shikshamrita, той има един такъв интересен параграф, който казва, да си предположим, че сте поканени на някакво място за обожание, което е различно от вашето място. Той предлага какъв вид медитация да имаме в това друго място, различно място за обожание. Basically, he says one can meditate that, oh, how wonderful. Uh, These people are worshiping my Lord in this way. <coughs> in this different way. <coughs> so let me let me appreciate uh, that they are worshiping in this way and let re- let me remember my Lord and and uh, Let this experience deepen my my love for the Lord. И тогава той предлага ние да си човек ние да си помислим о колко прекрасно е че те го обожават моя Бог по този начин. Нека тази това усещане да задълбочи моята собствена любов медитация към моя Бог. And so instead of seeing the other tradition as a as a competition or a threat, uh, seeing it more as, as a complementarity. 
Вместо да виждаме другите традиции като а, нещо, някаква конкуренция или като заплата, тогава а, вместо това ние може да ги виждаме, трябва да ги виждаме като нещо, което допълва. I talked about this in Ukraine. <laughs> He was attending my course called Dialogical Nationalism. As we were talking about Ukraine, and my seminar was called Dialogic Nationalism. Dialogic Nationalism. Yeah. And there I was discussing about interreligious dialogue and It's it's an idea which for many devotees is quite foreign actually. dialog, idea която за много вайшнави е доста чужда. Because our general approach we think of um, we think of spiritual life. Spiritual life means preaching, preaching means telling everybody the absolute truth and everyone should just listen and submit. А защото and surrender. Защото за нас духовния живот означава проповядване, а проповядване означава просто да кажеш на всички каква е абсолютната истина и те трябва да да се покорят на тази истина и да се отдадат. And when people don't do like that, being very submissive and, and just surrendering, we we kind of wonder what's wrong with them. <laughs> well maybe part of the problem, it may not be the whole problem. Maybe they have a problem, but part of the problem might also be ourselves. И наистина, може би те да имат някакъв проблем, обаче, може би част от проблема да бъде и в нас самите. И може би част от този проблем е, че ние си мислим, че това е една еднопосочна улица. И ние си мислим, че аз имам цялата истина, те не имат никаква част от истината и моята задача е просто да им разтоваря тази истина, да просто да ги зарея с тази истина. Просто да ги натоваря с тази истина. Но, да, ние виждаме, че истинския реалния живот не е точно така. Но, реалният живот не е точно така. And the reason it's not like that, uh, of course, we can say, oh, it's because it's Kali Yuga. Uh, that's our blanket explanation for everything that's wrong. <laughs> it's all Kali, it's Kali Yuga, and everyone's in Maya. <laughs> Then we feel very good about ourselves. And, and we remain the, the tiny group of people that we are thinking that um, we're not in Maya. They're all in my we're not in my <laughs> Which makes us feel very good, but it doesn't get us very far in terms of actually expanding influence. So an, an alternative way of thinking uh, could be that we develop a culture of dialogue. Alternative начин на мислене би могъл да бъде този, чрез който ние да развием култура на диалог. Which is what I would suggest our 
our real culture is. If we look at Bhagavad Gita, it's a dialogue. Questo as Uh, is, is several dialogues. Yeah. And if we would become more known as dialogical, as open to dialogue, uh, we might we might make more progress in our mission. Диалогични uh, хора, личности, които допускат диалог, тогава ние може да осъществим по-голям прогрес. Anyway, don't, don't get me started, as they say. Uh, <laughs> that's a whole subject. Back to the verse. Айде да започвам, както се каза, обратно към стиха. The context of the verse is that Krishna is returning home. He's coming back to Dwarak. Контекста на стиха е, че Кришна се връща вкъщи. Той се прибира в двара. And this is very nice. Um, it's actually describing uh, one major motif. It's one example of a major motif in the Bhagavatam. And that is uh, meeting and separation. И това описва един от главните, една от главните теми в Бхагаватам, което е срещите и разделите. The first canto as a whole, we could say, is about separation. It's about the departure of the Lord. Which is strange because it's the first canto and we're hearing about how Krishna is leaving the world and the whole Bhagavatam is supposed to be about uh, the activities of Krishna But first we hear about how he leaves. Което е странно, защото това е първата песен и Бхагава там се предполага да бъде заден след на Бога, но още първа песен ние чуваме как той си тръгва от света. So what is this? What's going on? И какво е това? Какво се случва всъщност? What we're getting is the impetus to hear about Krishna by realizing, oh, we're, we're missing something. We're, we've lost something big time. И това, което се случва е, всъщност ние получаваме подтик да слушаме за Кришна, защото ние чуваме, че а, ние сме загубили нещо, нещо много важно. So this chapter is uh, describing a meeting that the Lord is returning to Dvaraka and we get a little snapshot of how wonderful it must be uh, to welcome Krishna. А в тази глава се разказва за среща, не за раздяла, момента, в който Кришна се връща от Варка и ние получаваме един такъв а, а, като снимка, а, ко- която ни дава възможност да усетим колко прекрасно би било да се срещнем с Бога. And of course, the bigger context is uh, that uh, the Bhagavatam as a whole, but especially the first canto, is a kind of sequel to the Mahabharata. И разбира се, другият по-голям контекст е, че Бхагаватан, по-специално първа песен, е нещо като а, а, последваща, следваща история след Махабарата. Продължение на Махабарата. Махабарата е завършила, войната е завършила, на практика всички са избити. Uh, Bhishma is still alive. Chapter 9 he's, he's, uh, he's become a, like a pin cushion upside down. And so many arrows. He's lying there. And he's, uh, he's actually teaching. We get a summary, an extremely short summary of his teachings in the Shanti Parvan of Mahabharata. Бишма е все още жив, той лежи на това легло от стрели и в девета глава на Багалатам. И ние получаваме в Багалатам една много кратка, кратко общение на неговите учения, получения от Шанти Парва Махабарат. 
And prior to this, uh, there's this whole thing with Ashvatthama, who's murdered the five sons of Draupadi, and what to do with this uh, murderer. E para isso vai estar a história de Ashvatthama, que tu viu que tinha uma cidade de Draupadi, que fala que se prazer se estou de dia. And he's going to try to murder Parikshit. E então este seu pito do guia Parikshit. Uh, because he is the last remaining descendant of the line uh, of the Kurus. And the whole Mahabharata is really, it's a story about uh, dynastic succession. It's a big struggle to figure out, to work out the succession of these kings. And Maharaj Brikshu is going to survive because Krishna inter, intercepts and saves him. But then what happens? Maharaj Brikshu does something kind of stupid. Google. <laughs> <laughs> he he throw, you know he, he shows his anger at this sage Shamika by putting this dead snake around his neck. Not a good thing. And then Shamika, who's a wonderful sadhu, no doubt, unfortunately has a quick tempered show off kind of a son who thinks because he's a Brahmin he can curse the emperor so he does. A Shamita koito e no prekrasen madrec i sezeni u bači ima no gnevljiv ka i kot pa želaj da se pokaže sin koito se misli če može to se pokaja poneže Brahmin da pokalne imperatora i da poklina. So the one king who was, you know, survivor, the the final, the last hope for the dynasty, now he's got seven days to live. He's decided to accept the curse. I to je posledan sah od dinastika, koji je uspio da cele. Sega se kada čima samo sedam dana život, zato što to je prijel pokljetet. So what are we left with? In Koye Stala. Koye Stala. Tretfo ni Estala. What's left? Koye Tretfo ni Estala. Kakpo ni Estala. Kakpo ni Estala. We're we're left with the Bhagavatam then. Tretfo ni Estala e Bhagavatam. Because Shuka is going to speak to Parikshit, what's he going to speak? He's going to speak to Bhagavatam. And in the Bhagavatam, in this chapter, we get this vision of a beauty of perfect reception, welcoming of the Supreme Personality of Jagadev in his own home Dwarka. И в тази глава ние получаваме тази картина на съвършена красота, на съвършения начин на посрещане на Кришна, който се прибира в своя собствен град Барка. This reception is the exact opposite in character of the reception of Maharaj Parikshit by Shamika Ishi. И начинът по който Кришна е посрещан, посрещан в Барка. Shamika is, he's, he's just, what is he doing when the king comes? Yeah, he's doing nothing. <laughs> and this is the problem, he's doing precisely nothing. 
is disengaged from the world officially. Той е официално неангажиран, дисангажиран от света. But what is Maharaj Parikshit thinking as he sees him there doing nothing? Но какво си мисли Маджа Парикшит, когато го вижда, че той не прави нищо? He's thinking, this guy, is he really doing nothing or is he faking that he's doing nothing? Маджа Парикшит си мисли, той е там, Маджа Парикшит, дали той наистина е в транс или само се прави, че е в транс? In a trance, but I'm putting it in slightly different terms. Doing nothing. Дали той се прави, че не прави нищо или само наистина не прави нищо? And then this becomes another issue throughout the Bhagavatam: is what is what is true action or honesty and what is deception. И това е друга тема, и това дава началото на друга тема в Багата. Каква е истинската истина дейност и кое е измама? One thing that as anthropologists have noted about the human condition is that not unique to humans, that many animals have capacity to deceive. Но което антрополозите се забелязали за хората, което не е уникално за хората, много други животни го имат, е тази тенденция за измама. Тенденция, capacity. Способност. But we have a special capacity, namely, Quite sophisticated language. We have a special kind of ability to do it, because we have a lot of speech. And one of the special features of our capacity with language is our capacity to speak untruth. We have a special kind of ability to do it, because we have a lot of speech. We have a lot of speech. We have a lot of speech. Sounds pretty nasty. Because yeah, yeah, Istina is truth. Yeah, Istina, Istina, Istina. Yeah. Like Asti and Nasti. Asti, Nasti. Yeah. Well, the Nasti's are pretty nasty. Nasty. So the Bhagavatam, you know, what does it say from the very beginning? Dharma, Projita, Kaitavatra. We're rejecting all forms of deceptive dharma. Bhagavatam sama tanchal kazva. Chiva dharma. Che se otvorlja vsiakta psiški vidove izmamna neistina dharma. So in the setting of the scene, which is the first canto of Bhagavatam, we have this wonderful vision of the Lord being super welcomed. The super lord being super welcomed in his super city. И в самото начало на Бога там има тази картина, където върховният Бог е има получи този супер супер посрещане от своя супер град. And this helps us to realize to be conscious of what's lacking in our lives. Това ни дава възможност да осъзнаем какво е това, което ни липсва в нашия собствен живот. There's no Dwaraka, there's no Krishna, there's no reception of Krishna. Няма Dwaraka, няма го Krishna, няма посрещане на Krishna. All these things are missing, and so something is missing in the heart. Всички тези неща липсват и нещо също така липсва в сърцето. And so this is all meant to awaken a sense of longing. There's something missing in my life. И всичко това е предназначено да се буди чувство на копнеш. Има нещо, което липсва в моят живот. Something is missing and yet something is also available. It must be there. Otherwise, why would I have this feeling that something is missing? Нещо липсва, нещо ми липсва, обаче едновременно с това Нещо е и достъпно. Иначе, защо аз имам изобщо това чувство, че нещо ми липсва? 
And so each day we want to try to reawaken re that sense of longing for Krishna. И всеки ден ние се опитваме да се будим отново, да това чувство на купнеш към Кришна. Бхагаватам съществува за да ни помогне да направим това. Yes. Is there time to reflect on something? I would say so. I was told like until nine o'clock. Yeah? Okay. So with your permission I'd like to reflect on the points that you raised that I found very interesting and oh. possibly share a comment in yeah. response to it. Mm -hmm. So um, you were saying that um, when it comes to interfaith dialogue that um, our culture is one that they listen and we speak. Mm -hmm. We have the answers. They don't know anything. They're in Maya. And it should be a one-way dialogue, which is monologue. It's a monologue. <laughs> you tell them, they say, and if, and if they think anything different, or they have a different opinion, or a different light, that's just Maya. There's no opportunity for them to kind of like, for us to develop synergy, to go back and forth and develop mm -hmm. synergy. Mm -hmm. And you were saying this is a part of our culture which is problematic because it may make us feel very good about ourselves and very secure about ourselves but it doesn't help us to introduce Christian consciousness into the world we just remember it's small and very elitist yeah. um, but um, we're not actually making an impact on other people's consciousness you know, in the world around us I don't know if I stood you correctly yeah, that's a nice way to put it <laughs> to share it kind of like a perspective yeah um, and that is that is it possible to change that culture and in our dealings with the outside world if the culture in our mutual dealings don't change because mm. many devotees have a perspective when I read the Bible time I see a dialogue yeah. and when I read Gita I see a dialogue I don't see passive hearing mm. I see Purifat Maharaj in the beginning of the sixth chapter giving a, a kind of reflecting back to Krish, uh, to um, Shukadeva Goswami the things he's understood and then the whole Bhagavatam Sanskrit is led by Purikhit's questions or the sages' questions they initiate it, the listener is initiating it, not the speaker mm -hmm. and yet in, in our culture, in Islam the way we're trained in our own hearing is one of passive hearing we sit and we don't initiate yeah. We don't we don't um, kind of like reflect back. Yeah, maybe we, we should contribute start contribute to the discussion and it's very much we're trained in monologue. Maybe we should start our Bhagavatam classes with questions <laughs> from the <laughs> listeners <laughs> instead of the other bit. <laughs> yes, go ahead. So my point was that I, I just can't see if our everyday experience of how we learn Bhagavatam is one of passive hearing and yeah. we're just vessels with, with you know, nothing and then we're not allowed to contribute to a yeah. dialogue or discuss like about this book. Yeah. But I, I can't see how it's possible to change the culture that we're imbibing every day yeah, yeah. and act differently with the outside world. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. I've often thought one thing that could help in this regard, uh, which wouldn't be very difficult, we could develop a culture that uh, before the Bhagavatam class every morning. Everyone just makes it a habit to read the verse and the purport that's going to be discussed. Mm -hmm. And that acts a little bit like priming the pump, you know, uh, starting the thinking process because uh, most of the time and I think I'm not alone. My experience is when I'm asked, okay, now, Bhagavatam class, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. You know, that's the mantra for going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and the look on the faces is one of, let's see if he can entertain me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
you know, it's sort of like, uh, it can be quite challenging. And the, re <laughs> the reason, the reason is that the, the brain has not been put into, hasn't been engaged uh, in what's going to be discussed for some hours you know, since the last time. And even then, maybe it wasn't very engaged. <laughs> so I completely agree. I think that there could be a more, more dialogical Classes, then this would contribute to making a more dialogical culture. Yes. Translation. If we want to have a dialogue and somebody hears and they don't know English, it's good to translate as well. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> so maybe we should start from the most practical points. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Let me just summarize quickly yes. what happened so far. Мати Джу каза, че според нея, понеже тя цитира нещо, което Махарадж каза в лекцията, че трябва да се опитаме, когато проповядваме на другите хора, да това да не е просто монолог, а да им позволим да има диалог също, да не си мислим, че ние притежаваме абсолютно 100% цяло съзнание, те притежават 0%. И тя каза, че ако ние ще ще се опитаме да променим начинът по който проповядваме на външните хора, трябва да се, преди това да се опитаме да променим начинът по който ние сами общуваме помежду си. Да, например, Бага там класовете, които а, понякога се получават така, че са просто като а, един а, едностранен, еднопосочен монолог, без другата страна да, да участва изобщо в а, дискусията. И, Идеята е да, да може аудиторите да се включват повече, да, 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 да мислят бактите повече, да се имат някакви въпроси и да имат дискусия евентуално. И Махарадж каза, да, това е много хубав поинт, ние може би може да постигнем това. А ако въведем а, такава култура в Искон, че преди лекцията бактите да могат да прочитат стиха и коментара, върху който ще се дава лекцията. Така че те да са подготвени и този процес на мислене а, да започне още преди лекцията и като започне лекцията, да тогава вече ще имат някаква концепция и дявол лекция. И ще ми е по-интересно. Иначе му грач каза за това, което се случва, че тази мантра на Мобагавате, вас е дявола, вас е мантра от нещо като айде са, лека нож деца и всичко почва да спре. И да. So we summarize it. Thank you. Saying, you agree, you're saying that you wish to that the Bhagavatam class or the Drupal class was more was more dialogue and I think one way to bring that about is that if um, the participants read the purport and verse prior to the class mm -hmm. so that they were kind of like a little primed or informed mm -hmm. about the content. Um, as it is we come in like blank slates and we look at the speak like blank slates and you know, the Om Namo Bhagavate Mantra is, is our cue to go to sleep, and we just remain blank slates. And um, as the speaker, you didn't say this, but what I understood you just mean is that as a speaker, that's really uninspiring. You feel as if you're just there to entertain and to, to kind of like fill up the time <laughs> until the end of the time is finished, and you don't feel that very inspiring and you wish that we can be, change the culture. It can be challenging. It can be very challenging. <laughs> and you said you too wish that the child um, culture could be changed so there was more churning of the Bhagavatam or more churning of the content going on. Yeah, did I understand you correctly? I don't know if you would like to add anything <laughs> if I missed anything or if there's anything you'd like to add. No. Just to underline that I think this uh, wouldn't take any big um, organizational changes, it would just, really just to encourage the bodies to read the verse and the purport before the class, think about it a little, see if there's some issue that comes up in your own mind uh, that you'd like to, you know, hear discussed, uh, some question, something, something about the verse or something in the purport, get the thought process going and then 
uh, that will incline one to listen better if if it's it may still be the sort of standard format of the of the class but still one may listen better because one will be anticipating or expecting uh, that something be touched on because one has read and if it hasn't been addressed what one is thinking then at the end one has has a point to make or a question to make and then, because that's another thing you give a class uh, you do your best <laughs> and then you ask any further points any questions and then everyone kind of <laughs> <laughs> looks like this <laughs> <laughs> that can be uh, also both um, dissatisfactory and can also be a bit embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. yes. Can I have my permission to read Please. that passage? <laughs> so you're saying that you don't think that... Excuse me, Mother, can I just ask you something? Mother, can I just ask you something? Mother, can I just ask you и въвеждат някакви промени в самия формат на Барла Там, лекциите. Това, което може да се направи той отново за повтори, е правилно даните да свикнем да четат стиха и коментара през лекцията, за да може да неща, които са интересни, които те искат да дискутират, да си ги отбележат, да си ги запомнят, така че да, ни, да са подготвени, когато слушат, да ни е по-интересно и на края на лекцията те може да, да зададат също въпрос. И така че няма нужда да се променя нищо от формата на Барла там лекциите. Просто правим знаете да са по-съзнати. Yes. Марач, you were saying that uh, you don't think it would require to make organizational changes to change the culture. Mm -hmm. The only thing that would be required is that the devotees make it a habit to read the verse and purport prior to the class. And if that would um, kind of like stimulate their interest and their inquiry, they'd be thinking, God, I'd really like what Maharaj might be saying about this section, I'd like this clarified. So they would um, listen with a sense of anticipation, hoping that you would, or the speaker would touch on something that has already um, created interest in them. And even if the speaker doesn't touch on that, because they're interested, at least they would ask a question or make a comment at the end, mm -hmm. um, which currently we don't. You know, it's like we're passive during the class, you know, from our body languages. Sometimes the, the speaker might think they're all asleep. It's <laughs> pretend hearing, Stephen Covey calls it. Pretend they, hearing. Pretend <laughs> hearing, so that's you. They, they've got their eyes open, but the lights are off. <laughs> the lights are on, but there's no one home. Yeah. And, um, and then that's really obvious when you ask, is there any questions or comments? Because there isn't, there's been no yeah, thought yeah. process going on. Yeah. And so there is no questions, and that's also very dissatisfying and almost embarrassing for the speaker. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Thanks. Did you correct me, Maharaj? Very much. Would you mind if I um, shared a perspective on that? Please. Or would that be kind of like, I don't want to come down your fences? Why not? So, um, just, just a, you know, a very kind of minuscule perspective on that is that um, I remember once hearing that. Um, when Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati like Thakur would pass on a verse or purport, he would often take a month on the same verse. And um, and I found that, because my husband and myself do it at home now, we discuss at home, and um, I found that following certain clues that we've picked up from when we listen to Prabhupada's lectures or read his books by ourselves, and he says, discuss each word scrutinizingly. And, um, and when we do it like that, when we go sentence by sentence and allow each of us to give a perspective on it, mm. to give us look at it from different perspectives, different mm. lights of vision, he used, that's the phrase we're looking for, yeah. different. And when we do that, it actually it stimulates, it really gives us that sense of, um, the, 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 this is Tantra Sankam verse, hit Rasayana Kata, mm -hmm. because our minds are contemplating and analyzing sentence at a time beginning yeah. from the top and each word and, and each of us has an opportunity to participate and yeah. the the hit rasayana katal we can feel building up mm -hmm. 
but one of the things I find in my one of the reasons I actually don't normally attempt this from lectures anymore <laughs> because it's one per port per right. class right. and there's no opportunity for this analyzing each sentence at a time each word right. and allowing participation and do this contemplative sentence at a time but it may take us a month to get through the purport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, how can you get hit with a katana? <laughs> Translation. I'll summarize. you she the неговите коментари и книги да се изучават а, а, от различни гледни точки, така че дори а, всяка една дума от, а, от стиха или от, а, от коментара да могат да се разглеждат от различни гледни точки. Така а, може да това да стимулира много предно даните, да ги накара да имат различни реализации, така да споделят, да, да бъде много а, интересна дискусията. И тя също каза, че не се чувстват ентусиазирани този нормален и стандартен начин на дискутиране на Байла там лекции в храмовете. И те си правят такива събирания от къщи, където дискутират Багава там по, по, по този друг начин. So I guess we'll be hearing more about your method. Your husband's coming today, is it? He's coming today. I think there's kind of infinite ways of discussing the Bhagavatam uh, as you are doing is, is certainly uh, it's a very, very wonderful way. Uh, in one sense, one thing I do is kind of the opposite. I like to do Bhagavatam overviews. And we did something in a manner two or three years ago. And I still do this um, on online and giving some <coughs> lectures sometimes and <laughs> actually I was going too fast and I was requested to slow down because I was trying to do um, one canto in two hours <laughs> and then what he said uh, maybe we can slow it down some <laughs> so now we do something more like one chapter in an hour uh, or two hours. But I think both uh, both extremes are valuable in different ways. Uh, as you said, Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur, have you heard that he actually did it uh, frequently? Yeah, I only heard of the one time that he did that with verse number one in Radhakund, but maybe he did it more spend a whole month. I know Prabhupada once said, I think he was prompted by that occasion to say, one could spend a month studying every single verse of the Bhagavatam. And then he kind of said, uh, 18,000 verses, do the math, how long is that going to take? <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Споменава е много интересен и ценен. Той каза, че аз, той каза, че той лично има друг метод, който е точно противоположен. Той прави overviews на Бабата. Обощава Бабата. Обощение, което понякога за два часа цяла песен на Бабата може да бъде обощена. И а, даже правилно да е в един момент го помоли да малко да намали. Темпото, защото било много бързо и той сега започна да го прави един или два часа на една глава от Багата. Би благодарен да го видим да се има. Ще видим, че да се има.
Тези, които дискутират, че ще имат до право като решение за това, сигурно ли ще бъде? Не разумен. Don't we run into the risk of uh, um, accepting at the end of the discussion a speculative uh, sedanta or conclusion if we just discuss among ourselves and at the end the result might be uh, improper, improper uh, conclusion? Yeah, good point. That danger could be there. That right, but point but um, we do have the, the text and we do have the purports and at the end of the day they are what they are so we can and the more the more expert we become the more we know the, the text we can remember oh no that can't be right what I'm speculating because it's also said here, mm -hmm. such and such. So the the the, te the the shastra is always bringing us back into line. No, крайна сметка ние имаме стиховете имаме коментари, така че дори ако има някакви спекулации, тогава ние може да си кажем, о, това което аз си мисля дали наистина е потвърждав се потвърждава в багава, там тогава може да отворим да прочетем и коментари да видим. But the classical Upanishadic system for imbibing higher knowledge is a, a threefold process. It starts with shravanam, then goes to mananam, which means thinking about, and then nididhyasanam, which we could say is something like digesting. <laughs> А, но класическия опанишави, опанишави процес за получаване на знания има три части. Първи е шравана, слушане, втори е манана или е, разсъждение, обмисляне. И последния е ниди дясна, който означава нещо като да го а, реализираш знанието, да го смелеш. Да го слушаш. So without the, the manana and the nidi dhyasana, the shravana, as we say, it's in one ear and out the other. Anyway, it's a big subject, but it is after nine o'clock now. <laughs> Thank you all. <laughs> Have a nice day. Shiva Prabhupada ki jai. Prantara Shima Bhagavatam ki jai. Gaur Prima. Gaur Prima.